CMTC. Hello. We're so excited to see you via the internet. Oh my. My name is Sarah Sheps. I'm a casting director uh, at Man Casting. We cast commercials primarily, and um, I've been doing it for quite a long time now, so I'm excited to share some little tidbits of information I've learned along the way. And I'm Daniel Falk. I'm Sarah's husband. Uh, I'm also her employee. I work for Sarah at Man Casting, directing sessions. Uh, I'm also uh, an actor, um, so I do uh, mostly TV and film now. I started out doing theater, but I don't do too much of that anymore because it's hard to have a family and travel around at theaters all over the place all the time. Um, but uh, so I've learned a lot uh, about acting, uh, working at Man Casting, um, learned a lot about the commercial process, and uh, excited to share some of that with you all today. Today we're going to give you like some little tidbits about our industry and you know how to be successful in commercial auditioning and stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to say is uh, it's a wonderful industry, it's kind, it's beautiful, um, but it can be challenging, you know. Um, so what I always tell especially new people coming into the industry, the most important thing is to be nice. Um, kindness, being a good person goes a very long way. Um, you never really know who you're talking to, so you should treat everyone mm -hmm. with respect. Um, we cast a lot of children as well. I'm always out in the waiting room um, looking at the parents as well, because when you're casting kids, their parents are going to come to set too. So I always like keep my eye on, um, on that, on parents who seem like they'd be easy to work with and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, kindness, kindness, kindness. Yeah, I mean, when, when you started out, because Sarah was an actor as well, and when you started out, you um, were just a freelance session runner for a variety of different casting directors. And, you know, people who may have um, looked down at you then, you know, or been rude to you then, you know, like you couldn't remember that stuff. I mean, Sarah's very forgiving, so don't worry. You've yeah. never said anything mean, but not everyone is. So, yeah. um, you know, the, the PA that is working on set today is going to be a production coordinator in a couple years and then a producer in a couple years after that. So you don't know. You know? So it's most important yeah. to treat everyone with respect. And the same goes for us. We treat everyone with respect as well. Um, and it's kind of like a team. Um, another thing I like to tell um, people about commercials is you've got to count the little wins. There's, you know, it's not, not everyone's going to book every commercial, but things that can make you feel really good about yourself. When we put out an audition, let's say we're casting a McDonald's commercial and we need one kid, we'll probably get about 4,000 submissions just through agents. And then if we put it out on social media and our casting groups as well, we'll probably get another 2,000. So that's 6,000 people trying to audition for one role. We see about 50. So if you get an audition, that is a huge win. Congratulations. Um, we believe in you. That's why we're bringing you in. We never bring anyone in to be like, oh, they'll never get it. Let's just waste everyone's time. Um, if we bring you in, that means we believe in you. We believe you have a chance to book mm -hmm. it. So you should feel really good about yourself. And everyone who comes through the door, we hope that every single person who comes in is the person who books it. We need you to look good because if at the end of the session, um, the, our clients, the advertising agency creatives and the director aren't happy with the, the casting that we've done. That looks bad on us. Yeah. Um, so we really want you to do good, you know, and it, and it can be frustrating for us when you don't. Um, so that's, that's the most important thing for us is that we, we need, we need someone to book it because if nobody books it, that means that we, we just have to do it all job. over again. And then if you get a recall, so you go to the initial audition, if we call you back for a recall with the clients, huge win, you know, of those 50, well, of those, you know, 6,000 people. And then of those 50 people we brought in, they probably call back maybe 10 people. So huge win. Congratulations. You did a wonderful job. If you get a call back, you should consider that a win. Then what happens after that is um, they'll pick, you know, one or two people that they'll present to the actual client. You'll get the, you know, the word you've been put on hold or an avail check. If you get put on hold or even avail check, my goodness, that means you are like top two of, you know, 6,000 people. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then if you book it, obviously it's wonderful because you get a bunch of money and you see yourself on TV, but that doesn't always happen. So each little win you get, you have to like hooray for yourself. Yeah. Because it, can be, it can be frustrating, especially if you're kind of on a streak where you or maybe getting a bunch of holds but not booking anything, that can feel very frustrating. Um, but it's important to, to let yourself have the emotional win, even though it isn't the financial win <laughs> that, yeah. that booking the spot actually puts it in. If you're put on hold, it means that you're being presented to client along with another person and they don't know who the client's gonna pick. And there's always, a, there's like a whole calculus around why who gets picked for what you know and, and it could be a question of you know well this kid needs to match with this dad because they kind of look like they could be 
you know, a family. Um, and, but they may have liked you better, but they like that kid better, but the other dad matches better with that kid. So, you know, like you don't know why you weren't necessarily picked, but you can just always take that as a win that you crushed that audition and feel good about that at least. Yeah. One of our favorite parts of the CMTC is the kids casting competition as well as the commercial casting competition. Um, we cast kids all the time. It's kind of our specialty. And obviously we cast commercials, you know, three a day. So we, uh, we know commercials, we know kids very well. The most important thing I can say about these is to be yourself and be real. If you watch commercials on TV, it's not someone saying, my gosh, this cell phone is amazing. You know, it's just a real person picking up their cell phone. Um, what we're casting is just a slice of life, real people doing real things. Um, and that's really important yeah. for commercial casting. Oftentimes, um, the, the great challenge with commercial acting is to try to make, you know, a, a piece of advertising copy sound like a thing that a human being would actually say, um, which is particularly different when you have like long product names. Um, but that's always the challenge. You know, they're always looking for authenticity and, and genuineness and realness. And oftentimes they're, they, they're looking for that quality of performance with a script that is full of words that have been approved by a legal department <laughs> that no human being would actually say ever. So that, that kind of becomes a challenge where oftentimes you're working against the script to try to make it sound more human than it's necessarily been written. So really try to like, you know, almost like just record yourself talking sometimes or, or watch a lot of commercials and, and just sort of like hear natural speech cadence. And that's what you need to be kind of gunning for rather than this like really presented, really like it's, wow, Coca-Cola is delicious. You know, I should be avoiding product names, but you get the point. Like that's, that's often the challenge. And, and the, the, the person who understands how to, to, to come across as real with a sort of an artificial sounding script is often the person who books the job. And for the competition, uh, for the CMTC, record yourself. Everyone has cell phones that um, record. Just do it a bunch of times. Try it different ways. Get a friend to record you and watch yourself back. Because you'll see, you think that you're just swaying a little bit like this, you know, just moving a little bit. But on camera, you look like this. And, um, and also, a lot of people will stop, you know, like especially in competition. They'll be saying their script and they'll be like, sorry, I messed up a word. All of us judges have nothing in front of us. We don't know what you're saying. That we have no idea what the script is, so keep going. Doesn't matter what you say. Even with auditions, for when you come and audition for us in real life, keep going. It's not a memorization contest. It's, you know, we want to get, we want to cast someone who's believable. But at the same time, if the, if the train gets off the tracks and there's just no, there's no coming back from it, don't be afraid to stop and restart. And don't be, don't be totally freaked out that the people behind the, the table are going to like throw a brick at you, right? Like if you say like, I'm sorry, I just have to restart. Just take a second and just go for it. But don't, oftentimes what happens is when somebody makes a mistake, they, what they instantly start doing is beating up on themselves. You idiot, what did you do? You idiot, you forgot your lines. And how are you, how are you possibly, how can you expect yourself to get back on track if that's what you're doing to yourself, right? So if you're gonna stop and restart, stay calm, forgive yourself, everybody screws up. The nice thing about when you shoot like a commercial, they shoot it on digital and there's no limit to the amount of footage they can shoot. So that there's always, they're not gonna run out of film. So in the same way, on, on the day, at the thing, if you mess up, just forgive yourself, take a deep breath and then jump back in. It should be fun, like especially for kids, less in the competition at the CMDC, but more in real commercial casting as well. We're not trying to cast a robot. Some kids will come in and their parents told them to say it like this and pose like this. So we, you just want a kid that you can, that is genuine and you can work with. So parents, a lot of times when they come into auditions, will like drill them in how to do it. And then the director will say, hey, try it like this. And the kid can't. So it's better just to, you know, teach them to go with the flow, try other things. And we can tell when they hate it. Um, if, if a kid hates auditioning and doesn't want to do it, don't do it. It should be fun. Um, it's work 100%. Uh, when you actually book the job and they're paying you, it's a lot of work. You, it's a lot of sitting around and eating craft services. Um, but it's work. Uh, but it should be fun. Uh, just like if a kid plays hockey or a kid is a gymnast or whatever makes them happy, this should be like a happy hobby too. Um, sometimes kids will come in and they'll say like, I hate this and I don't want to be here and I hate you. And it's like, 
especially, I know a lot of you who are going to the convention kind of live all over, not everyone lives right in downtown Toronto like we do in our offices. So it's a, it's a, it's a commitment to drive from Belleville, to drive, some people drive from Ottawa, to drive from Oshawa, like, you know, to drive in for an audition. First of all, you parents are incredible. Um, we have a kid and, and I don't think I would do that for them. <laughs> um, so good for you guys for coming, first of all, for coming to the CMTC. What an opportunity for your kids. Like I would have loved this when I was a little kid from the prairie. Um, you know, it would have just been a dream come true. Same with auditions. Like it, it can be a big drive. Um, so make sure your kid wants, wants to be there. Um, it really comes across when when it's like a, like punishment for them, or you know they're yeah. But, but don't it. don't make sure they want to be there. Be there if they want to be there. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like don't like don't don't try to force it. Um, there are things that keep, that parents can start doing with their kids to sort of like train them in terms of how they think. And a a big thing that a parent can do, and, and this kind of depends on on how old they are, but but they need to start thinking independently. Um, when a, a director is hiring a child actor, they're not hiring a child, they're hiring an actor, or at least that's what they want to be able to do, right? And uh, a kid who's able to make decisions for themselves, who can actually bring ideas to the table, like that's the dream, right? You can't always get that, especially with like a three-year-old, but um, finding out like, give your kids a little bit of independence, you know, find out what they want to do, um, ask them their opinion, help get them to help you do things, you know, like getting them as independent as possible um, is really, really important. A lot of the times with kids especially will do um, something called a silent on camera audition, SOC, meaning uh, you don't say anything, you're kind of just like a kid, maybe in the background eating a french fry, all those sorts of things. So what we do a lot for kids auditions, a lot, is something called a Slayton chat. So the first thing we have you do is say your name and how old you are. Very easy. Everyone can do that, but you'll be surprised. Some people will say, hi, I'm Sarah Sheps and I'm six years old. So you can't really say wrong information, your name, how old you are, but do it with confidence. Hi, I'm Sarah Sheps and I'm six years old. You've aged poorly for six years old. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but it's something that parents should practice with their kids because a lot of the times we, we, you know, we send first round of auditions is just a camera operator, session director, and we send it all to the director and the, and the ad agency. So they're watching it from the comfort of their own home and office. So a lot of the times they just watch the slate. If a kid or an adult slate is really unconfident or, or um, distracting, they probably won't even watch your audition. So the most important thing is your slate. So it's something everyone should practice. You stand still, uh, not crazy still, but you know, you know, kind of relaxed. stand relaxed, comfortably still, your name and how old you are. It's very good to practice. Then for silent on camera auditions, a lot of the time we'll do this slate and chat. So Dan will just ask you a question like, hey, uh, you know, what did, what's, what's your, your favorite, favorite holiday? What did you dress up for for Halloween? Um, and you, and you can't say a wrong answer. I mean, if you say something offensive or a bad word or something, not good. But otherwise, like, do they care if your favorite candy bar is a caramel or an arrow? No, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they just want to see you being like a natural, normal person speaking. Really, they, they just want to watch you talking on camera. So it actually doesn't even really matter what you say. No. Um, so they, they might even turn the mute on just to see you just existing in front of camera. So, But um, a lot of people, especially new people and especially younger people, really, really struggle with this. Man, it stresses them out and kind of makes them feel anxious. Uh, so that's another thing you can practice at home easily. Get your grown up or your friend to take your cell phone and just ask them to ask you random questions and uh, and just, you know, practice just, just talking, just being normal and then watch it back and kind of see how it goes. It's really a great skill you can have, especially starting out. You'll be going to a lot more silent on camera auditions than big dramatic monologue auditions where you're saying a lot so it's something great you can practice yeah oftentimes one of the most useful sort of skill sets in training that a commercial actor specifically can have is improv training a lot of the actors that book the most commercials are second city main stage alumni um, uh, people who teach improv around the city, very experienced improvisers tend to do really well. Um, and oftentimes it isn't necessarily that they are using all of the skills that they have developed um, as an improviser. You know, like you're not improvising an hour long, long format thing. Um, the, the real benefit to having improv training is it kind of 
it changes how you think about acting and how you approach it. Oftentimes with um, TV and film and long format, when you go in for an audition, you, you know, you've worked on your lines, you've prepared what you're going to prepare, you go in, you do it, maybe they give you a redirect, you know? Um, but that's really it, you know, like you do it once, as long as it's clean, away they go, they move on. With commercials, you're not tending to shoot one commercial, you're shooting three commercials. You're shooting the director's commercial, the agency's commercial, and the client's commercial, like the, the McDonald's or the Tim Hortons or whoever. Um, and everybody kind of has like their vision of how they want this thing performed. So everyone, you know, people are gonna be throwing stuff at you. You're gonna do it a million times in a million different ways. And the big asset of having commercial tra or uh, improv training is that that becomes a non-threatening experience. And not only are you comfortable, like, what about that? What about this? What about that? What about this? And constantly changing what you're doing. But you can also bring things to the table. And you can say, like, what if I tried this? Would it be good if I did that? You know, so that, that you're not just the, 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 the puppet <laughs> doing as you're told. You're, you're, you're also a, a collaborator helping bring stuff to the table. Um, so if you have access to, excuse me, if you have access to, in Toronto, there's lots. There's Bad Dog, Second City, uh, tons and tons of, of, uh, of opportunities for, for training that you can get here. Um, in a lot of, of smaller markets. To, yeah. um, like you, weekend yeah. intensives and things, so you can come into the city for a weekend. Uh, um, but there's also great improv probably in whatever city, town you yeah. are in, um, or close by. Yeah. Um, so just And it isn't necessarily that you you need to have like top tier training necessarily. What, what I did, was I took a few Second City courses and then me and some of the people that uh, I took the class with would book a studio and we would just play on our own for an hour, a couple times, like once a week. Um, and so there's also those kinds of opportunities too, where you, you're just sort of like on your own, you know, with a group of your friends, just sort of like playing improv games. Um, Just go in with confidence. There's a reason you're there. Uh, if you weren't wonderful, you probably wouldn't be there. Learn as much as you can. Um, I remember, I think this is my, oh gosh, I've been doing it for a long time now, but the, the judges they have and the people they have are incredible. I was so like, you know, casting director agent starstruck when I came. It's unbelievable the people you get to meet. Listen to what they have to say, learn from them, go to the workshops. Um, they're they're brilliant at what they do that's why they're there and uh and you can learn 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 be a sponge take it all in but most importantly have fun it's like the best weekend of your life probably especially if you're a kid i can't imagine how much fun you're having um so enjoy have fun be confident and just just take in all you can because it's a really special opportunity and i would just say you know the the thing that i always find hardest to watch when i'm when i'm judging is just when somebody when somebody does as i mentioned before which is they they make a mistake and they mess up and then they start to spiral um so just learn really work on before you go in telling yourself if i screw up it's okay i'm gonna be okay and figure out ways of forgiving yourself instantly in the moment so that you can get back up on your feet fast um because everybody screws up i screw up all the time <laughs> so yeah, and all the people behind the table if you give them a script they'd all screw up too so yeah. don't stress out um everybody makes a mistake every now and again everybody makes lots of mistakes every now and again um and just pick it up take a deep breath stay calm and we can't wait Get to see feet. you soon cmtc forever